There we go. Sam, thank you for coming on the show. So I got to start off with the first question I asked everybody. What is your favorite superhero? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Favorite superhero. I mean, as a kid, it was Spider-Man for sure. Interesting. As a kid, it was Spider-Man. I loved the uh, ability. And then even when I dream, like when I have superhuman capabilities in my yeah. dream, sometimes I can fly, but most of the time I can run, jump, and climb. I don't shoot webs out of my hands, but I can, but I can run, jump, and climb like better than anybody in my dream. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's so cool. So that kind of leads though into what you're doing now with movement and everything. But mm -hmm. I want to go back to the beginning, which we were just talking about briefly before and how you really, you know, came to be who you are today, helping mm -hmm. with movement, you doing think and helping people rehab everything. Where did that all begin? Um, now I grew up on a camp owned by the Memphis Presbytery outside of Memphis. And so at a very young age, I was doing team building ropes. We had a ropes course. Yeah. And so I was doing like, I was a team building ropes course instructor by the age 14, by the age of 14. And then, so I was like, I was watching groups coming together and problem solve and like argue and then, okay, then figure out how to disseminate the information to the right people and, and then actually meet an objective. And then basically watching people get frustrated and then figure out a way to work together. Yeah. And then accomplish the the goal, and then um, you know, then of course we'd keep them safe. So I got used to just being with groups and uh, and having fun in those type of environments, like objective based obstacles mm -hmm. and team building. And then so then I was in the uh, then after the, and I played football and I played a couple of years of semi pro football and I always kind of understood movement and biomechanics. Yeah. And so I was just kind of naturally, you know, it gifted that way of just yeah. like watching the body geometrically and which angles were firing at the right rate. And so I could kind of see that. And that's how I could um, play linebacker as well. I was a very yeah. small linebacker. I was like super small, especially in the semi-pro league I played in. But I could watch the opponents and see the, and I'd just like watch their film and I'd see the quarterback and I would uh, and I would watch their body language and I would see their default patterns and their personality traits basically. Totally. And I could get there faster. So then, of course, this is kind of retrospective, like thoughts on like how I was doing that. Yeah. And then, um, then I was in the military. I was in a ranger unit, and that's when I really started understanding biomechanics greater than I ever imagined because I was doing physical activity um, with mental and emotional strain um, on me oh, yeah. that that was um, unimagined. I never imagined pushing myself that hard and not knowing when we were going to stop and then constantly getting, um, um, you know, different objectives thrown at you under harsh conditions. So you're, you know, so I started understanding the power of the mind and where your emotions try to stop you and fear and insecurities and stuff like that. So I started training people in the military and, um, but anyway, so I was fascinated with all that. And then as soon as I got out of the military, uh, I stayed in like four and a half years. And as soon as I got out, I started training people and building obstacle courses and um and so that led to then fast forward you know i was doing this on my own and working for a few different um, companies and then in 2010 i built at least four acres of land and i built a symmetric response obstacle course and i would film people's kinematic patterns and see which ways that they would have um, where they would default into moving under different strain, oh. under different, uh, under, under different positions. And then, so I would like have this like fun objective based movement system. And then I would add in some brain games as well. And then, so like a ball would roll down and it would either be black or red. I'd give them a block of instructions before we would do it. And then, so if it was red, they would have to, they would, they would have to remember where to go with it. And if it was black, they'd have to do something else with it. So little things like that. Yeah. And then, um, and then I started, uh, um, so I had that for a couple of years and then, um, and then I had an offer to, uh, start a business with a doctor of physical therapy and another trainer. And we created, um, an integrated rehabilitation performance center, uh, outside of Los Angeles and Calabasas. And, um, and we were pretty successful doing that. And we were, you know, doing our best to figure We knew the conventional model wasn't working mm -hmm. and physical therapists I was working with was, you know, uh, you know, 
definitely not happy with the way things were going with insurance-based patients and not really being able to meet her objective. So we started um, doing, so the name of the game was like unwinding restrictions. Like how do we unwind these patterns and then stimulate people in the right way uh, neuromuscularly and um, you know, to, to, to heal them. And then uh, we were doing that and then having some success. And then, uh, but then I found Bob Cooley, my mentor now. And um, so I was always like online looking for different movement modalities, different ways of hacking into the system. And um, so I found this, um, I found this guy, Bob Cooley online and they were teaching a workshop. He was from Boston, but they were teaching a workshop in Santa Barbara. And so I drove up to Santa Barbara for the weekend and took this workshop and it was like, flexibility workshop and I was like oh, okay this will be this is like you know is this kind of like something to do for the weekend and then as soon then within like one hour of the workshop or probably like 10 minutes I was like oh man this like my whole life's gonna change I'm gonna really? I can, I'm a speculative thinker so I'm like usually kind of like yeah. into the future and I was like oh man I, I can already see it I'm gonna this is like my, my path is gonna be altered from this because it was such a complete system of mapping out the health of the tissue with what's going on physically, mentally, emotionally, and energetically. And then, and, and then a way of like bridging into people and holding them accountable for what they're doing and how these restrictions even formed in the body. And then, so it was like, it was like all the things that I was already into. And, um, and then it started to give me access to how to find it in my own body and then how to like actually communicate to another person and get them to feel into what I was talking about or, um, and then ultimately tell me about what they're experiencing. So it's very much like equal participation. So that's what I was always like really looking for. It's like, we got to break this model of um, show up and fix me to, okay, we're going to work together and we're really going to participate in this equal parts and we're going to learn from each other. I know what I'm doing. I'm the professional here. I'm going to take care of you for sure. There's that aspect, but I need your information. Uh, yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't hold that information in and expect me to like be able to access you. I, you we, we gotta, we gotta open up. Totally. So, um, so that's that's what that's where I that's where I, um, um, you know, that's how I ended up doing this work that I'm doing now. Wow. Okay. So there was a lot there, and yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, no, no, no. That's perfect. The end is uh, what we're going to dive into in a minute. But I wanted to ask with going to ranger school and doing all that, was there, what uh, motivated you to do that? I have a friend who did something similar and his was the group, like he literally wanted to learn just how to operate in groups. And so he yeah. went to our army. Yeah. Is that, why did you choose oh, that? Yeah. Um, a few different reasons, but like definitely, I mean, if I, if I really want to be honest with myself, yeah. I probably wanted to feel like a badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At a young age, I was probably like, okay, yeah, I want to do that. But it was really about like, you know, a group of guys coming together, a group of people coming together yeah. and deciding on an objective, training for it over and over and over and connecting into this like flow state and making it happen. I mean, it was really like an ultimate high as far as like the, the training aspect of um, doing this with a, with a, with a group. Totally. Uh, and it was an, you know, it was like very intense and I guess I wanted the challenge and um, um, but you know, honestly, there's like a darker side to that um, besides like the darker, yeah. I don't want to get into polit you know, politics, yeah. political side of that and like world domination, but the, um, you know, the other side, but this will kind of lead into the work that I'm doing now. But, you know, it's like, you know, you take a kid that's, you know, had some learning challenges, me, had some learning challenges, and then not quite sure how I was going to make it in society, right? So I had this pattern of going introvert and analytical to try to figure these things out, not really knowing how to be out with the world yeah. to ask for help. And then, um, so then, you know, you form, and again, this is retrospective um, thoughts that I, I've made sense of this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I kind of knew it at the time, you know, I kind of, at the time I was like, I mean, when it really comes down to it, I was scared to death of how I was going to make it in society. Yeah. So, and I knew I could do that job. 
And you know, and I'm happy I did because like, I, I got to experience the, the height of my, you know, some of my physical, mental, and emotional capabilities yeah. uh, at that time. Anyway, now I actually oh. have more. Now I actually feel like I'm in another version of a special operation unit uh, doing this work that I'm doing now. I feel like I'm in the, like the special operations of a healing community. Yeah. So, um, and I've expanded physical, physically, mentally, emotionally, and energetically beyond where I ever imagined. Um, but you know, that's, that's, that's kind of what I was looking for. I mean, I probably just wanted to feel like a badass and knew I could do the job and I was scared to death of how I was going to make it in the world. And, yeah. uh, and that looked very appealing to me, <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's just like the, that's just like the brutal, uh, honest answer. Um, yeah. that, but I like, you know, that's, and that's another thing I'm into. I'm like super into like transparent communication. Totally. How are we really going to learn about one another? Uh, unless we're really just like fully yeah. honest with like, you know, you know what? Yeah. I was just scared to death. That's why I joined. And I didn't yeah. know how to make it in the world. <laughs> you know? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was just, uh, I literally just recorded a video a minute ago about similar to that. It's this, how to get security in the world because most people like take a certain uh path in order to feel the security and then they realize shit nothing is secure ever yeah you're on it yeah you're so on it with that because it's it 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 comes down to breaking the survival state that we have yeah everybody like haunted by this survival pattern whether you know i mean just like even epigenetically how we like i mean the you look at the the state of the world we're still basically collectively as a society still conquering uh raping and pillaging yeah. the earth in in communities and so that's if that's like still happening in the world collectively we're still in this survival state and then like you know each generation when i think back on my grandparents and the people before them i mean those people had it they had it way harder than i had yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then i had some, you know then i had some you know my hardships growing up and then the next generation after me, you know, hopefully will be uh, even better and better. Yeah. So we still have that load, but everybody's like, but then now as it's funny, now that we're getting um, more evolved and we know how to like tap into each other's learning styles and we're super interested in supporting each other's voices. Now it's like, but we're moving so fast. Um, now we're creating another version of this survival state because we're, just keeping up with the world it's it's moving it's moving very quickly now yeah yeah no 100 percent. i mean i think you know you can tell right now like uh i was studying uh ai and stuff for a while and i was like oh this stuff's so advanced and then i look around i'm like most people don't know anything about any of this stuff what is going to come to this world within yeah. the next 10 years it's not like they're not going to be here it's yeah. just like they don't even know what's on the periphery and they're like yeah. You know, I have a smartphone, smartphone works good, blah, blah, blah. Things are about to change radically. And I think yeah. that's exactly what you were saying. There's got to be a bit of a dichotomy or a hardship where it's like, you actually have to like realize it shouldn't be that much effort, but you do have to learn the new thing if you want to stay up to date what is going now. And that that's both with social conventions mm-hmm. and technology. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, um, the main thing there is like taking what was working so well and not leaving it behind. Exactly. We have a bad habit as a society to like, Oh, the next new thing. And it's like, let's that that's, this is working well. Let's put all of our chips into this basket and, and go and go this direction. And then we kind of forget what was also working. Exactly. You know? um, so yeah, no, I'm, um, I'm, yeah, I'm interested in how it's going to go and like wanting to keep up and, I want to participate in all the new things and yeah, uh, evolve together. Where do you, where do you, where do you think in the AI is going to go or where do you, where do you, what do you already know? It's like everybody's going to have personal robots and robotics are just going to take over. I don't know. I, it's going to be even take over in a good way. You know, all the, the jobs. Yeah. That you do. I like, I mean, I've looked at so many different people's uh, mindsets behind it. One of my favorite is uh, Yuval uh, Harari. <laughs> Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, man, I always get, mess up his name. But in his newest book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, he talked mm-hmm. about AI a bunch. And he was just like, 
realize like we're creating these so we are the masters like everyone thinks ai will take over and like just oh get rid of the people but the way that he said it is like just we have to be cognizant of like what we create because what we create is what is going to be powered because we're programming it the way that we want it yeah i you know i'm very much into like minimize emfs and do everything as much as i can like that as well and then i'm like how do you combine nature and technology? And that's what I really want to see is some yeah. hybrid like silicone AI form, which is kind of like almost human, but it doesn't have the bad things. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it has to be like some type of techn technology has to advance to where we have like these super fast processors mm -hmm. have like, whether it's 4G or 5G, whatever, whatever, 10G, wherever it's going to go. Yeah. Like everything's just so immediate, but then we're not getting exactly by these, um, like on a cellular level, not getting attacked by like these frequencies that are, you know, just, I don't know a lot about that world. I know how I feel when I'm around it. I know yeah. how I feel when I don't, when I go like a whole day without like being barefoot on the ground and like being in, yeah. being at the park, you know, ultimately nature. But even if I just, I'm like right here in Venice. So it's like, yeah the beach not too far away and then um you know have a park and um in a little yard right outside and so if i don't go stand on the ground barefoot yeah i, I start feeling stressed and i start feeling disconnected and so i want more of that all day long yeah along with the technology i mean yeah of course we want it all yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but it's, i think it, and I, the thing is i think we can i think we can create all these things all these things are like unprecedented and they'll come from like the intent, if the intent to create it that way by not leaving out what was already working. Okay, it's obvious that like for thousands and thousands of years we were connected to the earth and going along with nature. All these indigenous cultures have taught us that. And then so it's like if we have it in our intent to keep what was working about that and advance at the same time, I think the answers would just come. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. agree. I think a lot of it, I mean, you know, I'm big into, I don't know if you ever read Healing is Voltage. Um, yeah, I love yeah. that book. Oh yeah. my God, love so that book. It definitely restructured the way that I saw positive and negative ions and how physics yeah. has a play yeah. more so into health than chemistry for a lot of the stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think... Yeah, the, who wrote that book? William Tennant, something yeah. like that. Yep. Um, yep. Anyway, he, um, he had the he, you know, I didn't, I read the, I read a second one on, which was like healing voltage. Plus, um, it had like a section, it added the second edition, added a version of oh, really? uh, how to heal eye diseases. And that's something that I had to figure out personally. And, uh, but anyway, the beginning of the book that I read, he was talking about how his, when he got really sick, because yeah. he, he had like LASIK surgery or one of the co-founders of uh, the, the procedure and he was like through cutting through all these different lenses in people's wow. eyes, viruses were going through his mask and he got really sick. He got a neurological disease and he was like, really, he said he was only like coherent for like two hours a day. And then wow. his two little dogs would go run around outside and run around on the ground and they would come and sit on his spleen and yeah. his like kidney or maybe a spleen and stomach. I can't remember like which, like, organs and meridians um but basically where he had the most damage or maybe it was his spleen and his head yeah and, um anyway and then he figured out finally he figured out after like months of them doing this that they were giving him negatively charged electrons from the earth and coming and putting that in his body where he needed it the most that is one of the coolest things ever and okay so that's and that's what's started him to figure out the healing of voltage yeah because like, he was like an ophthalmologist i think uh, originally yeah. like his like his profession before he got into the the healing aspect i did not know that yeah oh my god and eye health right now is one of the biggest i mean exactly what we were just talking about we want technology we also want to be able to see long distances <laughs> and it's yeah. uh i had a um i had a, a, a systemic eye condition called uveitis mm -hmm. and Sometimes you can, you can get uveitis like on the anterior portion of your eye. And sometimes it's not that as serious. It can yeah. still be serious if it goes untreated. 
but a lot of times you can just take like some steroid eye drops and treat it conventionally and it will it'll basically go away you know it's like an infection you take some steroids uh eye drops and then it goes away Mm -hmm. and then mine was systemic it was like basically expressing itself like an autoimmunity um but that i mean that term's like thrown around so loosely now basically every time that something's like um a systemic disruption, a systemic malfunction is going on in the body, and they don't know how to. Doctors don't know how to fix it. Yeah, it's autoimmune, and then I mean, five years from now, people are already starting to say that oh, you know, there's no such thing as autoimmunity. There's yeah. really like these dormant viruses in the body. I don't, I don't know. I just know how I healed it, and I healed it through um, doing this work that I'm doing now. Yeah, uh, the ways that I healed it through the manipulating the fascist system, and um, and then figuring out how, what was going on with my eyes. Why? I mean, basically when something's going on systemically, yeah. and I, that we could, you know, dig into like, you know, maybe it was the vaccinations and like crappy GMO food in the military, or maybe it was um, um, a, a number of things, a dormant virus in my body. However it happened, there was a weak line. It, totally. you know, my body didn't attack my my, my heart, it didn't attack my thyroid, it didn't attack my myelin sheath around my nervous system, it attacked my eyes, it attacked especially my left eye. And then, um, and so, but then, so the, once I started unwinding the accumulated dense fascial and scar tissue patterns in my body, yeah. my eyes actually started to like spread apart. And I started getting this soft focus. And then again, you know, I keep using this word, but retrospectively, I think that's how we uh, especially through the work that I do, you take the restrictions out of the way and then you make sense of what's been happening all your life by having the relief, by having the opposite of it. Yeah. You, know, you had a thorn in your side and you, you know, after a while you just adapt to it being there and then somebody finally takes it out and you're like, Oh wow, that was really making my <laughs> whole neck tense up. I was, you know, I'm slightly pissed off for the yeah. last two years because I had this thing in my side and I didn't realize it until it came out. And so that's how, that's how the eye thing was for me. I was, again, you know, I don't know if this gets too far out there, but uh, this is what I know about. So this is what I'll talk about. Yeah. And um, it goes back to this learning challenge I had as a kid mm-hmm. and being too over, over um, analytical and introvert in my head. You know, being introvert and analytical are perfectly beautiful ways of being. And it's just, and it's just like everybody has a version of these ways of being, whether you're mm-hmm. introvert, extrovert, see the world from the inside or the outside, whether you know how to promote yourself and make money or whether you know how to be intimate and care for people yeah. or cool people. There's all these different ways of being, but most of us have like a, a, a default pattern of only knowing that kind of one way. And then we get too locked into it. Yes. And we, don't, we don't have the flexibility to be all these different ways. Um, so going back to the I thing, like I was literally like kind of panicked and searching for information so intensely that my eyes were strained. My eyes were like literally closer together and they were strained. And then as soon as I released the, you know, the, the fascial patterns, so the fascial patterns, you know, run all through the back, the, all through the body, you know, fascia connects every cell of the body. Yeah. It connects multiple muscle groups together to form what we call kinematic patterns. Um, you know, so every, basically every which way the body can move, you know, all those like throwing. So an example, that'd be like throwing or catching or squeezing or turning, totally. turning out. And so those fat, that fascia connects multiple muscle groups that create those patterns. Right. And then fascia also connects, you know, every cell of the body goes into the, the organs, into the vascular system, into every organ. I mean, all throughout the body, the infrastructure of the body. And then the body adapts to whatever you're, you're putting it through. If you're walking through life like super excited and feeling good all the time, your, your fascia is like more flexible. Uh, so it's either elastic or plastic. And then as soon as you get tensed up, you know, the, you know, your mom's about to come in your room and tell you to clean up. And you're always like getting in trouble or, you know, your big brother's beating up on you. Whatever the thing is, it's like you tense up. And it's yeah. like how many moments of the day is that happening? And those form certain patterns. And then so I hope I'm not digressing too much, but all this, you know, so every, each one of these kinematic patterns are associated with an organ and associated with like multiple ways of being. And then, so we lose access. So literally these areas in the body get harder and they, they, they get dense and then you lose 
um, access to them. And you literally what's ha physically what's happening is you're not getting nutrient dense oxygenated blood to that area. And then you're, you're starting to atrophy that muscle tissue, that part of the body, it starts to cut off, you know, then by the, you know, you don't really notice it until you're probably, um, you know, until you have an injury until you like, you know, pull a hamstring yeah. with your knee or, you know, it's easy in an easy example is like the older person that's starting to hunch over and, you know, it's a, it's easy to see that their body's starting to go towards the path of least resistance and they really don't have anything left, but yeah. uh, tissue, um, fascia tissue and like bone, you know, they don't have too much supple tissue left. And so through manipulating these fascial patterns, I actually started to um, understand why my eye, the, the eye thing happened in the first place. And then I was able to heal it. Also did a lot of fasting and I did some ozone therapy, uh, things like that. You know, I'm definitely a big believer yeah. in doing, doing all the things, you know, all the things that anybody's discovered about how to hack into the system. Like I'm, I'm, I'm interested in trying, I'm interested in learning as much as I can through everybody. Totally. But the, the three main things I did to heal my eye, um, this, which was a systemic inflammation which was, uh, you know, first and foremost, manipulating the fascial patterns to understand what was going on physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, energetically. And then the fasting and the ozone therapy and things like that just like wipe out inflammation. So we're talking about total fascia, like the whole body covered in fascia and how it literally changed your eyesight. How did you get into the flexibility, resistance and understanding or resistance flexibility and really understanding how all these systems work together so intricately. Cause that's one of the coolest things that I've, I've, the reason that I started following you and like basically trying every stretch that you post online mm -hmm. is because of the fact that I was like, wait, this is more of a systemic approach. Like it's a full body approach to like where you're like, Hey, we're extending these organs and we're working on this versus just like, Hey, let's, uh, you know, let's just do an arm stretch today. Just stretch out the arms. Um, God, it's so, I'm going to try to do my best to like yeah. cover it in a concise way. That's easy, easily to, uh, easy to understand. But, um, cause I'm still figuring it all out myself. You know, yeah. I've been studying different movement therapies for you know, 20 years or so. And, uh, you've know, been doing something for, you know, for the last 15 years or so, I've been doing different, you know, some type of service work dealing with movement modalities to help, you know, train people, heal people. Totally. And, um, and then, you know, but I, I was always so frustrated that I didn't know how to connect. Like I would see people's lifestyle or the ways that they were thinking or being emotional or not being emotional enough. Um, I could start to see these connections, but I didn't know how to access it. And so like, you know, 10, 15% of the people that I would run into, I'd actually be able to connect with and make sense to. And I think that's true for most people. Yeah. Like we have about probably 15% of the population that we actually kind of connect with and the other, you know, 85%. Yeah. Okay. We have to try a little bit harder totally. to like make the connection. Right. <laughs> and, um, so then, so I was figuring all this out, but then when I like literally when I just went to the workshop, uh, for the first time, and uh, Bob Cooley's resistance flexibility, I just felt it. I felt it in my body. And yeah. I was like, okay, th this, is, this is the proper way to stretch. So just on a physical level, I understood it was a, the right way to do it. Because if you only go to a passive stretch, say it's like I got a little crick in my neck and I'm just going to do something like this, right? Yeah. Just tugging on the tissue, right? Yeah. So whatever the most accumulated dense fascia the restriction is it's probably somewhere along here's the beginning of this range here's the end of this range the problem is somewhere in the middle of that and then what we usually do is skip over it and then we just tug on it and then by the time we tug on it we're just pulling on the ligaments and the tendons and yep i'm not i'm not saying you're never gonna do any good that way but yeah. it's 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 there's a time and a place to hang out in a passive stretch in my opinion, but most people that I know um, need to spend so much more time in the start position through the middle of the range that, you know, they have a ways to go before they need to hang out in the passive end. I mean, the, 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 the most elongated, more passive stretching. 
Cool. And then so, so what happens there, and this is what, um, again, Bob Cooley, he went to, he was at the 2012 Fascial Congress and then met uh, Dr. Gimberto, he, who has, uh, you can look him up online. He has all these videos. It's called first guys, the first guy that I know of that started filming living fascia. And then so um, Bob went to France where this guy lives and, um, and they were doing surgery. And so they had, they were like filming this guy's hamstring endoscopically while it was under manual pressure. So there's only, you know, there's a f three different ways that I know of to like really manipulate fascia. Well, three physical ways. And there's, you know, you can man manipulate it through thoughts and emotions yeah. and things like that. But like physically you can either do, external pressure from like the outside in you know like manual therapy massage rolfing stecco technique things like that um carpal tonal surgery you know like is an example they go in and they just literally cut the stuff out oh really uh, yeah you know like so they'll, they'll go in and like where it's like accumulated and dense they'll just go in and cut that stuff out of the way and throw it away that cannot be good well you know it's 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 any time that the body has to go through trauma yeah. it there's, you know, it's a whole process of like it forming more scar tissue to deal with that. Yeah. I mean, the body doesn't like being cut into when, <laughs> when you can help it, you know, you don't, you want to do a different thing. So what we do is like, um, is, is like a non-invasive surgery. I mean, it's literally non-invasive surgery. Yeah. So, um, so when you start in the most contracted state, you're following the path of most restriction. That's the beauty of it. Like, cause we constantly go to the path of least resistance where we're not thinking about, I get up, I'm in a hurry. Oh, I got to go. And then I stand up real quick. And then yep. maybe my, maybe my low back hyper extends a little bit. Maybe my left rib pops out, you know, whatever it is, however I can tort myself um, to, to make that movement where, you know, it's unconscious. I don't even think about it, totally. but then, so the body adapts and forms more restrictions. And then, so your path of least resistance gets, um, gets greater and greater. And you're, 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 you know, so you're, I mean, your path of least resistance um, starts getting narrow, more narrow. Your yeah. path of most restriction, your, the path of most resistance get, gets greater. So you have, you know, it starts to, it starts yeah. to get more, more dense, and then you have a more limited path to go. So when you take the body in the most contracted state and you follow the path of least resistance, I mean, the path of restriction, you can unwind those patterns. And what they discovered what they already discovered, what they proved um, was that when you start in the most contracted state, the fascial patterns actually turn 90 degrees and go along with the muscle fibers and they start to lengthen from both ends. I mean, to stretch something, yeah. you got to pull it from both ends. And what usually happens on a passive stretch for most people, not always, if people are super um, you know, genetically gifted or have done like different types of work on themselves and like really practice these things, you know, they, you can go into a passive stretch and your body naturally tenses the right way and it does naturally pull from both ends when it's working the right way. Yeah. Most people don't. Most, you know, the, the, you know, the average person in the world, you know, at least in America, um, their, their, their bodies aren't doing that. So that's, 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 that's what's happening. So that's what I figured out. So to go back to your question, like how I got into it, like I yeah. felt, I just felt that concept, what I just described. I just felt that happening right away. So I was like, wow, this is lengthening. This is changing the tissue. This is, and, and the beauty of it, it's, it's unwinding the fascial patterns from the inside out. Yeah. It's like rolfing from the inside out. <laughs> and, and I'm a fan of manual therapy. I like getting a deep tissue massage. I like rolfing. I like, I like stecco technique. I like these different manual therapies. And of course, I'm also like, I don't mind that sensation of like something being slightly therapeutically painful. Yeah. But you have to, in order to unwind these like global flat fascial patterns, like basically patterns that, you know, go from your bottoms of your feet all the way through your legs, through your torso, around your, around your, um, around your arms and into the head, like these big global patterns, like in order to like manipulate all that, you would have to take so much manual therapy yeah. to, to, to get to that versus like starting in the most contracted state and then having someone move you through it. So I teach the self-stretching portions of this, but then like what we do, we do this in groups. Like I, I hardly ever do a session by myself. 
I usually have one or two people assisting me. Yeah. Um, Cause it's, that's how much it, that's how much force it takes to overcome someone's resistant force from where they have the most accumulated dense fascia. Oh, yeah. So then, um, so anyway, so I felt it, I felt it in my body. I felt this actually happening. And then, uh, then I started just diving in more to it. Totally. Wow. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I definitely am uh, someone who's feeling what is trying to get rid of some patterns, but not understanding that you can do it from the inside out. I broke my left arm a long while ago, but I still notice like some patterns from it and like Mm -hmm. just some tight areas around my scap where I'm like, maybe I can roll it out. Maybe I could like do all the nothing. Every massage therapist says it's something else. I'm like, okay, maybe I could figure this out then from the inside. Yeah, what's what's even more interesting is like what you were doing, what was going on in your life yes. leading up to the breaking your arm. I mean, even if you're driving down the road like and, and you get into a car wreck, people generally have a hard time understanding that whatever's going on in their life at that time, and then you get hit, yep. how your body it's how your body tenses up and 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 and, and resists that that impact in that moment. That is all telling. That's where all the information is. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's where you will, will truly figure out how to unwind it from the inside out. Okay. Wow. That is, that's very interesting. Here's the good part. You don't have to figure it. Like if you're just <laughs> by yourself and say like, after we get off this interview and you're like, okay, what was that? I mean, that's a beneficial part. You know, you need to spend time with yourself and like, you know, you're doing your self stretches, you're you know, doing your self practice, your meditation. That's a very important part. But then the beauty of it is asking, knowing how to ask for help. Yeah. And, and then even receiving the help you didn't even know how to ask for. And then so when you have somebody move you through these most, because re- wherever you're the most restricted, mm-hmm. you have the least amount of neurological connection to that area. So it's yeah. like a dead zone. It's like a dead zone. And usually wherever you feel pain and discomfort in the body, the the problem is 180 degrees over and usually wherever like if you have sensation in your knee so your knee hurts yeah. it's usually 180 degrees over in the back of your leg is where it's the most accumulated and dense and where you don't even feel it it's like a dead zone because it's so accumulated and restricted and then so you you relief you release that restriction you unwind that fascial pattern you get nutrient dense oxygenated blood. So then you start getting sensation to it and then the information comes. And then to use my favorite word today, you understand it retrospectively. Yeah. Because the, now the, now the sensation is there. Now you, now you actually can follow the sensation and then you figure it out a little bit by little bit. Maybe you, you know, you might have a big download of information right off the bat or might take a few times, but then you, then you start to, Basically, wherever you're restricted in the body, you don't have access to. Yeah. You don't have access to that way of being, and you don't have access, or you have limited access to it, and then you don't have um, as much access and flexibility to the associative organ, the organ system. Yeah. Physically, this isn't just like energetically. Like these kinematic patterns are um, are physically more strongly connected through fascia to that organ. Yeah. And so the organs actually get restricted. We don't feel that as much. We like know when our neck hurts or like our back hurts or, you know, totally. you know a biomechanical issue. We, we feel those things and we're like, ah, I gotta, I gotta fix this. I'm not walking as, you know, as well as I like, but then we don't really feel the, the organs getting restricted until it's too late. And we sure don't really feel like, and we usually don't feel the, um, wow. I'm like not as, um, intimately connected as I'd like to be. Yeah. What's that? we don't know how to like really figure out that and know how that's associated with an actual physical restriction in the body. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done some like where I just like roll around on the ground and like try to figure out like where my body wants to go and stuff. And you'll notice like memories or different thoughts in different positions. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're already like most in the the thing is like all these things that I'm talking about, they're innately in us already. Like we already kind of know, like when you wake up in the morning, you don't wake up and do this. Yeah. You, wake up, you, know, you know how to resist and move through space. And exactly. you see dogs and your cats do it all day long. 
And so we like, we already innately know how to do this. And just like what you're describing, you're rolling around on the ground, you're searching like any, like all the people like in, um, in, in, in these, you know, I guess our circles yeah. you know, that are interested in, um, their bodies, their minds, their emotions, their spirituality, yeah. and, like the health of their planet and the, the health of them and, and how it relates to the planet. I mean, people are already like, they know so much about how to discover this stuff already. Yes. You know, each person I work with, I learn so much from because they're already doing a part of it innately. And so I get to learn every time I, every time I unwind someone's pattern, I get to learn yeah. about how they're being in the world. And then you take that restriction out of the way and then they get access to a way of being that they, that's been limited. And then I get to see this thing that they're doing. And then the more flexible that I am, yeah. I get to connect, I get to connect to my version of it. It's not about like, Oh, that person's really good at promoting themselves in business and I'm not very good at that. So I'm going to do what they do. It's like, Hmm, how, how are they being? Where's that in my yeah. body? Like now I get to have my version of it. I don't, I'm not trying to be as good as they are at it. I just want access to so the more flexible I am in my body, the more that I can pick up on other people's point of view, how other people are experiencing the world. And then that leads into this understanding each other uh, and understanding the world through each other's perspectives. I mean, I go pretty, I get pretty excited about it. And I think the more that these things can happen, whether it's like this work or through meditation, all these beautiful, totally. there's so many things, like so many great things people are doing. This is just the one that I'm the most passionate about. And I do think it's like a very complete system that um, yeah. complements everything else. Yeah. And that's and like, physically, I know it works. I see it happen every day. People that are just in, you know, discomfort and pain, you, you get the tissue moving from lengthening from both directions and boom, they're out of pain. And then the, how they keep those changes is understanding what's going on mentally, emotionally, and energetically. Yeah. And the little subtleties in their life of how, like ultimately you get so sensitive to like you're driving down the road or, you know, you, you, you see somebody you're attracted to, or you, you get your feelings hurt, like how your body reacts and where those patterns get restricted in the moment. And then you can use the resistance of the world to unwind patterns in the moment. Wow. So yeah. that's, that's so, I, know I kind of go all over the place, but um, I can bring it, I can bring it back. Yeah, no, that, that's, <laughs> I mean, I think that's one of the most crucial things that people don't know that they can do, which is understand like, Hey, when a happens, B happens in your body, learn how to stop basically reprogramming your mind in the way that you don't want it to be reprogrammed. Yeah. Like when I first met Bob Cooley, yeah. um, the guy that created this system, he was, uh, um, I mean, just to give you a little backstory on him. He was a, a, a mathematics professor at Williams College and a um, and super smart guy. He had a background in, you know, biomechanics and dance. And, you know, so he was into movement. Anyway, he got hit by a car and the girl, the lady he was with died. He lived. And this was 30 years ago yeah. by like a 1971, like Lincoln town car or something, you know, like a big monster steel um, vehicle. And, um, you know, but he was okay doctors checked him out he was okay but he was in a lot of pain so he started figuring these things out and um so he's he spent a long time you know doing this and um figuring this out and started developing this system so when i met him i had some of these connections made in myself and i knew a lot about like movement therapies and i knew a lot about like um personality traits in studying human nature things like that but like and i knew i was limited in like i knew i was like passionate but like i knew something was off for me like emotionally like i was like man i was like i even like asked like you know different people i was in relationships with like uh, getting like i knew to like ask their perspective but i was like what am i not doing like i didn't have intimacy right totally so i knew that part so i knew something i knew something to go after but he he was the one that like really taught me that um how to get energy from the outside world now i'm going to speaking about this through um, an introverted perspective and then, you know, and I, and some, there's plenty of introverts that know how to get, you know, get energy from the outside world and they might have a deficiency somewhere else. And it's not totally. that. So I'm just describing my main thing that I was the most restricted in. And that was like, 
going too far in. I mean, I, even when I do that motion, going too far in, my eyes like go back to that strained feeling. Yeah. And that was part of this whole pattern of like being scared, not knowing how to make sense of the world or not knowing how I was going to fit into society and then totally. going inside my head to figure it out. And then so it was like, I mean, it sounds like such an easy concept and it, it's easy to understand like somebody could tell me that, but then to actually be able to feel it in my body Yes. And then start to get energy from the outside world and then like noticing people's lives, seeing what was so special about them, seeing, you know, then that would lead to seeing what's so special about myself and like all these, all that stuff was like that all started to make sense. But like it didn't start making sense to me until I started unwinding, I'd unwind the fascial patterns, I'd hear the information, unwind the fascial patterns, and then I would experience it in the moment. Yeah. So, um, so that was like one of the main things that I had to figure out. It was really this like being too far inside my head and like, I would have gone on and have a perfectly good life. Yeah. yeah. I could have, you know, I was making it, it was okay. It was when like, I was like, you know, totally not making it or anything, but I was irritated. I was, I was, I was putting so much energy into trying to figure it out when it was really as simple as having a community to help me unwind these physical fascial patterns. And then I could connect to the ways of being that yeah. I would experience it from it and then look at everybody. And then, I mean, like the concept of, of getting information about me through how other people are looking at me. Yeah. I mean, that probably makes sense to a lot of people, but it definitely didn't make sense to me. I was like, Wow, I didn't even know there was that much information by looking at how other people are looking at you. And so it's like, I mean, I could, I could, I could go and I could talk for a couple of hours about all these different things that I've experienced through doing this yeah. work. But that was like one of the main ones was like him teaching me about staying out and getting energy from the outside world. And now this, it, now it's just progressed and it's progressed more and more and more until yeah. like, um, you know, just a number of different ways that I'm just like, living a more enjoyable, fulfilling, enriched life. I know, like, I know more about, um, about other people. I'm able to, um, yeah. I'm able to take more of their information in. Like everybody's like, a like their own, like internet worth of information. Everybody's like their own, like, <laughs> movie, right. It's like, everybody's got so much going on past, present and future. And now I'm like able to tap into that more. Um, and I still, you know, not even, I don't even like to say like, Oh, I have, I still have a long way to go. It's like, I'm excited that I have more to go. I mean, I have, yeah. I'll, I'll, I will be excited to learn more, you know, throughout the end of my days. Um, and that's, I think that's the most exciting thing about life for me. It's like, we can just keep, you know, learning about this. Even now it's like, I can, um, I'll feel myself getting like, uh, you know, going through these files of information in my head and I'm like, I want to get so much information out. Then it's like, I'll calm yeah. down. I'll look at you like, Oh, we got a Jimmy. You know, I'll see the things in the background, yeah. see yeah. you having your life. And then that calms me down. Totally. And I never knew to do that before. I would just, I would have spazzed out the whole time. I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hard though. There's no, typically, you know, people don't have one, I would say mentors or any, there's no like um, in the tribalism type, communities they always talk about like some you know experience to becoming who you are but on top of that i would say most people don't know how things feel and that's one of the coolest things you were just talking about is when you actually felt the difference in what was happening and i would say like most people they see like you know a five or six percent body fat person they're like man i would love to be like that and it's like if you felt how they feel i don't <laughs> think you'd want to yeah yeah, that's a good example. It's uh it's just a, a miscommunication and like the pure like aesthetic of what we think we should be versus mm -hmm. like the turning inside and just like letting, you know, what you were saying, the information from not only the people around you but the feedback from literally everything around you. Yeah. come into you and you're like, "Oh, cool. Okay, I can respond like that differently." Or like, you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about like feeling the energy of like dense objects and things like that, where it's like, it's just a completely different mindset than like everything up here. And like, don't focus on the physical reality, which a lot of times can, you know, lead to that. Like, 
oh, what is going on? Like nothing's happening right now. Uh huh. Now I tend to um, my reaction to that is like, like I, I I agree with that, and I agree with like these, you know, some of these gurus or like some of these gurus that are like all into the spiritual world, and then. I tend to how I've made and I, and I agree and I always get like so much out of like hearing them speak and like, you know, be here now and like let go of the physical world. But like for what's been the most beneficial to me is like looking at it as like four equal parts just to be yeah. vague about it. Like 25% physical, 25% analytical, mental, yeah. 25% emotional, and then 25% spiritual. It's like we're physical beings on this earth. Yeah. My body's constantly communicating with me um, about what it's not getting mentally, emotionally, energetically, or what it is getting or what it's not getting. Excuse me. And it's and it's giving it's communicating to me through my physical body. Yeah. So it's like it, it that's where I like that's where I've like, I feel like we just need to like rethink or like kind of reeducate ourselves on what our beautiful physical bodies are actually doing yes. to communicate with our higher selves. Totally. If that makes sense. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it's all information stream. And if you're like, yeah. no, nah, I don't want to take information from the body or from my emotions. I'm just going to go based on purely logical thought. Then yeah. it's like, what do you think logic is based on? Yeah. You know, exactly what's going on in this this physical world (laughs) everything yeah so it's it's uh no totally i i mean i you know there's a like what is it the buddhist monks that try to like meditate them out of uh, themselves out of physical reality or something i yeah you know i I think that's i think i think all those things are beautiful i mean i I mean have at it you're 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 getting one of these space suits space suits to wear and like we're we're, we're in, so we're all trying to figure this out. And like, if you have an idea of how to do it, like, man, go for it. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a beautiful path and I think it's a valuable, valid totally. path to go down, which, what, however you want to make sense. It's your right to make sense of this existence, however you see fit. And as long as you're not hurting anyone else. Yeah. And then, um, um, so, you know, for the most part, though for the for the person like you got to go back to what we're saying of like blending in yeah like you know this is especially like this whole like the new biohacking community we're definitely interested in like how can we still participate with this world and use all these meditative practices how can i get there yep. faster and how can i stay balanced and aligned and stay open share perspective and do all these like older older world like community of communal practices and stay relevant in the, the ever changing fast paced world. And so it's like, um, you know, it's a, a combination of all those things, but yeah, you know, to the, to the monks, you know, I mean, God bless yeah. them for, for doing that. It inspires me, you know, totally. and there's, I don't know how many times in life I've been like right on the cusp of like, you know, just forgetting it all and been like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go walk the earth. You know, I'm like done with yeah. this. I'm done with this society. I, mean, I remember when I was like, when I first got out of the military, I was like, I I still don't know where I want to fit into this society. And yeah. I don't really like the way it's going. And I think I'll just go walk the earth. That's where my heart's really pulling me. I wasn't just like, oh, I don't want to be a part of the world. Like my heart was like, yeah, this is a, that'd be a beautiful path just to go be. Yeah. Earth, meditate, totally. you, know, you know, find some monks to go hang out with, whatever. But I never did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hung in there and now I'm like, uh, you know, trying to be some version of a, a modern monk, you know, modern, mm-hmm. modern version of, uh, um, you know, monk in a fast paced world and trying to keep up with everybody else too. Yeah. Yeah. The way, I mean, the way I always see it is like moving so fast in, uh, in the biohacking and like getting to everywhere you want to go and then moving so slow and, you know, who you are and like taking the time to think about things it's almost like you go you're advancing to everything to the point of where it looks like nothing's you know what i mean it looks like normal yeah. like everyday yeah. life and then yeah no that's that's funny I, I was just talking to somebody the other day about that it's like you know when you're really doing when you're really doing it right it looks like you've just been that way your whole life yeah it was like effortless 
exactly. you know, like, you know, you're just like looking like cool, calm and collected, thinking quickly, fast, accurately, um, having like beautiful relationships, connecting intimately with everyone, um, spiritually aligned with the world and the people in it. And all these things are flowing. Look at that person. And it's like, wow, man, that God, that, that son of a gun just has it. Or that, yeah. that, that lady just has it all, all figured out. They must just been gifted that way. But you know, it's like when you're doing it, when you're really doing it right, it's, yeah. um, it's, it looks effortless. It's like, act, you know, when you see an actor, yeah. like, like a beautifully done, you know, performance, it's like, it looks like it's so real and that it was just effortless for him, you know, but it's, uh, you know, it's so much hard work goes into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, but it's the secret. But it's, a, but, it, but, but it's, but when it, but when it's working well, your heart's pulling you towards it and it doesn't actually, um, I mean, maybe it, does, it feels like, I mean, I like work, so, oh, yeah. you know, um, so I don't, I don't mind that part of it. No, me neither. I'm yeah. a workhorse in a sense where I'm like just all day I could do it. Uh huh. I have to back if off. You love if you love what you're doing, you know, it should uh, it should be enjoyable and it should still feel like play. And yeah. um, you know, yeah, I'm a, I'm one of those crazy self learners. So everything, anything that I can do, which I'm learning, I'm like, oh, it's productive. I automatically did it. Yeah, I I I I, I, I'm, I, I can do that to a fault to where I'm like. <laughs> you know, did it made a bad decision. I'm like, man, yeah. on the and going like, Oh, what am I learning from this situation? <laughs> oh, it's like, Oh, it's like, wow, I'm going to be sure going to be better as a person from, from this. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I was very, uh, very much self-educated and, um, and actually didn't, didn't really learn how to start learning from other people. Mm -hmm. Ill, actually until I met Bob. Yeah. Until I met Bob Cooley, and then like started doing this work and got involved into it another community now I was like played football and was in a special operation unit so I was like didn't I didn't have an aversion to working with a team mm -hmm. but it was every time I was in one of those teams it was still like okay I'm doing my thing and uh, it's me and it's them and we'll come together but it's still like up to me to like yeah do the thing that I'm doing I didn't know that I could like change and, and learn from every moment and like really like you know figure out like take criticism and not like even when I'm taking like someone else's perspective and like taking criticism and letting it, this go into my body and let it guide me to where it's going to teach me. And then this, and this creates something new in the moment versus like my historic pattern is like, I would get, you know, I was always like a very loving, you know, sweet yeah. kind of person, but I was like, still like my, my natural pattern was to like um, be a little defensive or overly defensive and like, you know, I was, cause I was inside my head. And then if I'm like overly introverted inside my head and then someone comes to tell me, um, like, Hey, you're not doing this right. I'm like, it like kind of shaped me out of that. And my yeah. first response was like, what do you, why are you bringing me out of my world? You know? So I, yeah. I didn't know how to do that. And again, when I, when I changed these restrict, you know, cause my body was just formed that way. And I could, I could tell myself, I could put the intention out there to the world to like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to learn from other people. I'm going to, um, I'm not going to be so defensive today and good luck. It was still like, you know, it was hard for me anyway. It was very hard to do until yeah. uh, I changed the fascial patterns. I kept getting better and better at it. But then once I actually manipulated the tissue, then it was like, it was like, you know, you can, you, the physical example of that is like, you get hit, you get jarred, like in a car yeah. accident and you're super restricted and stiff it's like you know it's like it's like hitting, yeah. a, hitting a hitting a board or something it just cracks Seriously. and then if you're super flexible it's just like you know you just move through it and you just like figure it yeah. out as you go. you're just always reacting through uh, more capabilities awesome yeah to leave you this real quick or, or i'll stop talking for a second but like here's a great example of this um I told myself I wanted to like tell this story because it's such a subtle thing that makes such a big difference to me. It's yeah. like the other, the other day I was like having dinner with my girlfriend and we were, I was just like talking about all this stuff. I like to talk about ways of being and different things. And she was like, Hey, do you mind if, you mind if we don't talk about that right now? Like I still want to talk about it. And I was like, and at first like my feelings were hurt. 
Yeah. Right. I felt like this little bullet, like go to my heart. It was like such a simple thing. Right. And like years ago, like I probably wouldn't even have been so sensitive to even have felt it going. It just would have like hurt my feelings. And I would have been like, I would have like adapted so quickly to it and whatever. I would have just like brushed it off and just like kept going. Meanwhile, it formed a harder restriction in me and, 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 it, and it, um, it fortified that yeah. defensive posture. Right. But instead it was like that little bullet, like kind of went in. It was like, I was like, Oh, that hurts. And then I was able to like, look at her, stay out with her and like actually observe like what she was going through in life in that moment. Yeah. And I was like, mm. and I like pushed it out. And I was like, wow. It's like, why do I have, why do I think that has to be about me? Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I don't know. That's not what I was thinking. I was like, yeah. And then in that moment, that moment, this was just like a month ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in that moment, it was like, I like, I took that pattern that I've been working on and feeling better and better about. It. And I thought it was like pretty much like, I was like, oh yeah, I got that pattern kind of taken care of. And then we were, it was just like something so simple and subtle as like having dinner and she telling, telling me that. And then like, but I, now I'd gotten to like more flexibility and more sensitivity yeah. where I could actually stop it and like slow down time in the moment totally. and like see it happening and then change it. And then now it like, I don't think it's happened since then. Yeah. yeah so that's how these patterns change. And that's how you can manipulate the restrictions the accumulated dense fascial patterns in the moment, in real life, in real time. Yeah. Holy, that's awesome. No, I've, I've literally had very similar experiences, not where I'm like, okay, I know like how to adapt, but like the mindset of like, why can't I talk about this or something yeah. like that? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, wait, it's not me. It can't be like blah, blah, blah. And you like start to unwrap what it was, but we talked a lot about teams learning, I wanted to ask you what you think your higher leverage skill is, which is, you know, something like pattern recognition or learning to learn or some type of skill that, you know, you learned in one area, but now you pick up and you use it over and over again through other areas to really learn. And you're like, this is my one, this is my thing. This is what I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great question. I think if, I think it is like pattern recognition yeah. Seeing like the more time I spend with people now, I'm on a stage of development where like right now, um, in order to like make sense to someone and probably like really articulate what I see them doing and how to change it, I have to spend like a decent amount of time with them. Usually I can figure it out within like a 90 minute private session with someone yeah. doing this work with them. It's like intricate, intensive, intimate where I'm like with them right there with them going through these patterns and I can like see them and experience how they're being in the world and what they have been doing. So then it takes me back in time to like how they've been, how they've been dealing with that way of being their whole life or not yeah. dealing with it their whole life. And then I'll catch them in the moment and it'll be something like, you know, it'll, it'll be something subtle like the thing I just described or I'm like, well, you're usually too easy going. You're too appeasing. This is what, and then I can feel how it's happening in their body and how it's affecting this overall self-sabotaging pattern. Yeah. Usually the thing that, that people do the best of, it's also the thing that takes them down. Yep. We, we, we have a default pattern where it's like, this is what I'm good at. So every situation I'm going to use this thing instead of like knowing how to, um, to, to have the, knowing how to use other ways of being and how to learn from other people. But so I guess it, you know, it, it is, it's, it's forming into this like pattern recognition and how to catch people in the moment going towards a default pattern. And then where it gets good, what I'm still learning how to do yeah. is uh, um, bridge into them and articulate it to them. Otherwise, like I can know how to do the physical moves on them. Yeah. Problem, but it doesn't, it, it's not, it doesn't feel good. Um, I don't learn as much from it. I don't get the energy back from mm -hmm. it. And it's not as good of an it, it, it's special of an experience until like I really learn how to be with them. And I change my way of being yeah. to communicate with them. And so it's like I'm morphing into something else that I have access to, something authentic yeah. based off of them. So it's like I'm staying authentic. And I'm, and I'm uh, changing my way of being slightly to better communicate. 
and um and i'm still working on that i'm still feel half i still i still feel like an idiot there like half the time but uh but i think that's when you know you're doing something good when you're constantly feeling like you're failing a little bit yeah. get a little bit better and better at it but yeah i think you nailed it pattern pattern recognition is um I mean, I probably say the word pattern probably a hundred times a day. Awesome. And, and uh, so, yeah, I think it's pattern recognition. And, and then what I'm working on, that's what I'm good at. That's yeah. what I'm naturally kind of good at. And then what I'm working on developing is how to actually bridge that information into the person. Yeah. And actually facilitate a change together through equal participation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, and especially with what you've been talking about, like you can take in so much information from someone's body and how they're moving, feeling, mm -hmm. but the it language is always a gap. You know, it's always yeah. harder to like literally coherently articulate what you're actually trying to say and get them to do versus like what you're like, ah, okay, how do I like, how do I, you know, come across and get this into them the correct way versus like, you know, so like a personal training coach who's like, oh, you want to lose weight? Like, just, you know, eat less. Like, mm -hmm. don't eat these foods. Versus yeah. like, no, it's okay, let's see what's that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, I mean, that is awesome. Right, so right now, is there anything that you're currently obsessed with? You know, my whole thing in life is learning about the world through everyone else's perspective. Yeah. I want, I, I, I literally think that's how the, we can start to heal the world. Um, the, the, yeah. Health of the world is a representation of what's going on inside our bodies. Yep. With the healthier that we get, I mean, it's obvious that we haven't cracked the code yet and the health, and we're starting to, we're starting to figure these things out. People are starting to have a voice and the world's moving to a better place. And then there's some turmoil and yeah. like, divide in the midst of it but uh it's going in the right direction it really is There's more people especially if you don't watch tv um yeah. <laughs> it's like hanging out with your community it, like it feels like life's gonna be okay <laughs> um but uh so that's the that's the thing that i'm really working on right now is just continuing to do the work that i'm doing um and i want more access i still i just i just want to keep developing and i want more access to um yeah bridging into more people and doing the work that I'm doing and getting better and better at it and being able to help more people and help myself, of course. Yeah. And, and, um, um, and then being able to, um, um, make sense of like the thing that I'm kind of obsessed about is like being able to make sense of the changing the fascial patterns in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I'm, I know that I'm not quite articulating well yet. I'm, I'm getting close. Like I feel it and it's happening in my body. Totally. And like, but then like creating more of a system where it's more accessible for people. I think people are kind of fascinated when I talk about it Yeah. and, uh, and then I can do work on them and they can feel it. But then as far as like how to connect that to mm -hmm. them in their everyday life and then to get them their version of excitement or interest in yeah. like feeling the subtleties of every moment. Um, that's the thing that I'm obsessed with right now that I haven't quite figured out. Awesome. Haven't awesome. quite figured out how to um, make that more appealing or how to make it more, make more sense out of it to people. Yeah. Like right now it's fascinating, but it's not quite, not quite landing just yet. Yeah. So no, that's, I, that's what I, that's my, that's my goal right now is to make, to make more sense of that. To, to build to bridge into more people and then uh, but then the good part is I know the things that I'm doing uh, the more that I develop myself uh, the more that I can stay out with people and observe what they're doing and then I get access to them and then I'll figure it out I'll okay. figure it out I'll figure it out through learning from other people totally I'm gonna yeah. find it in here no no it's a digestion there yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah over time I mean yeah, I mean that's with most things though, right? You could think all day about it's like uh you know, you could look across the street and think 
you know, what's that girl going to eat for lunch? And you could like read every book and think about like learn literally everything and try to figure out mathematically what she would eat for lunch. But if you walk over and you see what she eats for lunch, then you know what she ate for lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's a great example. Yeah. I, I, Cause I can, I can, boy, I can like really go off into that analytical inside my head world and like, <clears throat> It's just like, it's fun for me there. Like I yeah. really enjoy it there, you know, yeah. and it's a beautiful place to be. But then when I balance it out with like walking over there and being like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what <laughs> now, exactly. now, now I get to have both. Yeah, so. totally. Well, before we sign off, where can people find you? Yeah. You can go to Samuel and That's S A M U E L C A M B U R N dot com that's my website and then i have that website for booking purposes and just for uh to streamline people having booking sessions with me and it has a brief description of uh, this work that i do and what you can expect out of a session um, but then for more information about this you'll want to go to the genius of flexibility dot com and then that's where you can find the work of bob cooley uh, he has a couple of different books out the genius of flexibility and yeah. Resist flexibility 1.0. Uh, and they're both available on Amazon and in bookstores. And uh, you can find out more about his work. He's a really interesting guy and I'm just a, a wonderful human to check out as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. This is awesome. And it's definitely something where now I have to go internal and try to figure out all the different emotions and things. Yeah. You'll have to, um, if you can make it out to LA sometime, we'll, we'll, we can do some work together. Yeah, I'll be yeah. out in LA soon. It's like yeah. I uh, you travel a good bit, right? Yeah, I travel a lot in LA. I have to make it out very soon. I have like too many people where like everyone's like, "Oh, you got to come out," and it's been like yeah. eight months, and I'm like, "Ah, okay, I'll yeah. come out soon." Let's uh, let's definitely stay in touch. I love everything that you're doing, and uh, um, yeah, enjoy talking to you and um, stay in touch. And then please reach out when you're coming to LA, and we'll. Uh, and we'll do a session and, um, and I can, I can show you more. Awesome. Well, thank you so much.